good morning i am atul choudhary assistant professor iimp college of law greater noida and today's video lecture is about environment protection act of 1986 introduction in the wake of the stockholm conference held in 1972 that advocated environmental protection at the international level and was one of the and also one of the most devastating incident of all time the bhopal gas tragedy of 1984 highlighted an urgent need for a comprehensive law with respect to environmental protection domestically the need for environment protection act 1986 was felt the preamble of the act states the objective of the act to be the protection and improvement of the environment it seeks to protect human beings other living creatures plants and property from environmental hazards it extends to the whole of india and aims to prevent control and abate environmental pollution even though we had the water act 1974 and air act 1981 and indian forest policy of 1988 there was a pressing need for general legislation with stringent penal provisions in order to safeguard the environmental rights background of environment protection act <clears throat> the concern of the environment in india is nothing new from ancient times we have believed in vasudev kutumbakam that is the entire world is one family indians have believed that all creatures on the earth are family including all plants animals and microorganisms our present day constitution also provide testimony to our old principles some of them are as follows by the 42nd amendment act article 48a was added as a part of the directive principle of state policy which stated that it was the state's responsibility to make effort in order to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country Article 51 AG declares that it is the fundamental duty of each and every citizen of the country to protect and improve the natural environment including forests lakes rivers and wildlife and to have compassion for living creatures <coughs> Our judiciary has outlined in a number of judgments that article 21 which guarantees the right to life and dignity also encompasses the right to live with healthy and safe environment in the case of subhas kumar was the state of bihar it was observed that the right to get pollution free water and air is a fundamental right under article 21 article 253 of the indian constitution empowers the parliament to bring any legislation to give effect to any international treaty agreement convention or decisions taken at a conference It was with the help of Article 253 that the Indian Parliament enacted the Environment Protection Act 1986 to give effect to the decisions taken at the UN Conference on Human Environment held in Stockholm in 1972. <coughs> Stockholm Conference of 1972. The United Nations Conference on Environment in Stockholm was the first conference had held at the world level. that took the environment as a serious international con- concern it led to the formulation of a stockholm declaration and action plan for human environment and other numerous resolutions that aimed at sound management of environment the declaration basically consisted of 26 principles that mainly aimed at facilitating dialogues between in- in- industrialized and developing nations on the matter of economic growth air and water pollution and the overall well-being of the people across the globe one of the most impactful result of the conference was the formulation of the united nations environment program india also participated in the conference and vociferously raised its concern for the environment in order to implement the decisions adopted at this conference the indian parliament exercised its power under article 253 to enact the environment protection act 1986 <coughs> objective of environment protection act to implement the significant decisions taken relating to environment safety and protection at the united nations conference on human environment held in stockholm in june 1972 india already had some legislation relating to different aspects of the environment but there was a need for comprehensive legislation that filled the gaps in the existing laws thus it was enacted to bring general legislation in environment protection and cover other major areas 
of environmental hazards that were previously uncovered to create new authorities for the purpose of protecting and improving the environment <coughs> sorry and to coordinate the activities of already existing authorities constituted under previous laws to provide for stringent and deterrent punishment to the offenders of natural environment who endangered its safety and health to facilitate the growth of subordinate and delegated legislation on economically sensitive topics and environment protection to promote sustainable development that is balance the overall development with environment protection <clears throat> need for environment protection act in india the first was the stockholm conference which highlighted internationally the impact of human activity were having on the environment development and environment were at crossroads with each other and the conference brought into focus the urgent urgency of their reconciliation for the benefit of humanity and planet as a whole the second was the bhopal gas tragedy it was about the leak of oleum gas from an industry and proved to be fatal for the people around the environment <clears throat> in also in bhopal gas uh, mic methyl isocyanate gas was leaked from a uh, union carbide plant and the oleum gas the case of oleum gas leak was uh, it was in delhi a shri ram food fertilizer uh, fertilizer plant uh, it this, this mishap had this happening held at the um, shri ram fertilizer plant in delhi this incident underlined the importance of regulating industry so that they do not get away easily from punishment of causing harm to the environment also the need was felt because india had some laws for protecting the environment like the air act water act but there was no comprehensive law that connected them and coordinated their activity and functions environment protection act in india the concept of eia reached in india in 1976 and 77 in the planning commission asking for department of science and technology to assess the river valley project for their impact on the environment subsequently it was expanded to include other projects as well they were subjected to the approval of the public investment board but there were mainly administrative decisions and had no statutory backing but it got support with coming of environment protection act 1986 after epa came into force a notification was issued under the act which made eia compulsory for 30 specified activities the responsibility for giving a clearance has been given to the minister of environment and forest the notification was raised in 2006 section 2 of environment protection act so what are the provisions of section 2 of and of environment protection act 1986 <coughs> it defines what is environment <coughs> environment has been defined to include air water and land and the interrelationship among and between air water land and human beings other living creatures microorganisms plants and property what is environment pollutant a pollutant is any substance in a solid liquid or gaseous state which when present in a certain concentration can be injurious to the environment environment pollution the presence of an environmental pollutant in the environment is called environment pollution what do we mean by handling handling in respect of any substance is deemed to imply its manufacture processing treatment package storage transportation use collection destruction conversion offering for sale or its transfer hazardous substance it refers to any substance or preparation which can cause harm to humans plants living creatures property or the environment due to its chemical and physiochemical properties or handling occupy in respect of any factory or premises it refers to the person who is in control over the affairs of factory or premises and in respect of any substance it refers to the person who is in possession of that substance now we will discuss about discuss about power and functions of central government section 3 power and power of the central government to take measures to protect and improve the environment 
to coordinate action among state governments officers and other authorities so these are the powers and functions of central government under section 3 of environment protection act and <coughs> to plan and execute nationwide programs to lay down standard for quality of different aspects of the environment to lay down the standard for emission or discharge of pollutants to restrict the operation of certain industries processes or operations in scientific areas to lay down procedures and safeguards for prevention of pollution causing incidents and take remedial measures power and function of central government also to lay down procedure and safeguards for handling of hazardous substances to examine the manufacturing process materials and substances that are capable of causing pollution to carry out and sponsor investigations and research on the issues relating to environment to inspect the premises plant equipment machinery manufacturing or other processes materials or substances to establish or recognize environmental laboratories and institutions to collect and disseminate information on pollution matters to prepare codes manual or guides relating to prevention control and abatement of environmental pollution <laughs> such other matter as the government deem necessary or expedient the central government is also authorized to constitute such authority for the purpose of exercising and performing such power and functions as the government may delegate to it section 4 is power of appointment officer section 4 authorizes the central government to appoint officers with such designations powers and functions as it thinks fit the officer appointed shall be under the control and direction of the government or any authority empowered by it section 5 power to give directions as per section 5 the central government has got the power to issue directions in writing to any person officer or authority which shall be binding on such person officer or authority these direction could be related to any matter like to close prohibit or regulate any industry operation or process to stop or regulate the supply of electricity water or any other service now we will discuss section 6 that this power to lay down the rules to regulate environmental pollution the central government has also been authorized to frame rules on the matters mentioned in section 3 of this act some of these matters include standards of quality of air water and soil maximum allowable limit of environmental pollution pollutants including noise the procedures and safeguards for the handling of hazardous substances the prohibition and restrictions on the handling of hazardous substances the prohibition restriction on the location of industries operations and processes the procedure and safeguard for the prevention of accidents likely to cause pollution and provide for remedial measures for such accidents section 10 power of entry and inspection under this section any person authorized by the central government has the right to enter any place at reasonable times with some assistance for the following purposes to perform any function entrusted by the government to determine whether and how such function to be performed or whether the provisions of this act rules made under any notice or the direction or authorization granted has been complied with <coughs> to examine and test any equipment industrial plant record registered document or any other material object to conduct a research in any building to conduct a search in any building where there is a reason to believe that an offence under the act has been committed to seize any equipment industrial plant record registered document or other material object if there is reason to be believe that it would serve as evidence for the offence committed or that a seizure is necessary for mitigating the pollution <coughs> section 11 so section 11 empowers the state government or any officer authorized by it to take sample of air water soil or other substances from the premises of any factory section 12 environmental laboratories the central government is empowered to establish one or more environmental laboratories or recognize any laboratory as an environmental laboratory to carry out the function assigned under this act 
rules regarding the function procedures and other matters related to the environmental laboratory are to be framed by central government by notification in the official gadget prevention control and abatement of environmental pollution according to section 7 it is prohibited for any person to discharge or emit any environmental pollutant in excess of the prescribed standard from any industry operation or process section 8 lays down that all the persons handling any hazardous substance shall do so by complying with all the procedures and safeguards as may be prescribed <coughs> cleaner provisions under environment protection act section 15 talks about general offences section 15 prescribes the penalty for general offences committed under this act if any persons fail to comply with or contravene any provision of this act or rules made or order or direction issued it would be punishable with imprisonment for a term which may extend to 5 years or with fine up to 1 lakh or with both if the failure or contravention constitutes then an additional fine which may extend to rupees 5000 may be laid for every day the failure of contravention continues and if this failure or contravention extends beyond one year after the date of convention convection then the imprisonment can extend up to 7 years <laughs> section 16 offenses by companies for an offense committed by a company section 16 holds responsible the person who at the time the offense was committed was in charge and responsible for the conduct of the company as well as the company however if it proved that any such person was liable exercise due diligence or that the offense was committed without his knowledge also if it is proved that the offense was committed with the consent convenience or negligence of any director manager secretary or other official then such person shall be liable to be processed against it is also specified that company includes any body corporate or firm or any other association of individuals the word director also means partners in relation to a firm <coughs> section 17 offenses by government departments section 17 lays down that for an offense committed by a government department the head of the department shall be held responsible unless he proved that the offense was committed without his knowledge or that due diligence was exercised however if it is proved that the offense has been committed with the consent convenience or neglect of any officer other than the head of the department then that officer shall be processed against and punished accordingly <coughs> and thank you this is the end of this video lecture